Hello YouTubers, Navian here. Welcome to another episode of uh, Kerbal Space Program tutorial. In this tutorial I am going to show you how to successfully build a rocket. <coughs> so, uh, in the first tutorial I did just a basic design uh, which is what I'm going to show you here. Um, for this one we're going to do the command pod one. Um, what I like to do, I just select the command pod right off the bat and drag it up here a little bit. Uh, that way I don't have to mess with it <coughs> later on in the build. So, we've got your command pod. Now, if you just select it and straight put it um, in here without um, moving it around, which if you select this, if you hit your <coughs> Q or, or uh, E key, it will rotate it. So if you just place it there, like that, uh, when you go to launch your rocket, the nav ball that's down here in this this section, uh, your northern red line on your nav ball will be below you. So when you take off, uh, all you have to do is hit your D key to go east into the rotation of the planet. <coughs> it just helps you take off. Um, kind of some aerodynamics and, and physics involved in that that I don't really understand. So anyway, um, so we have our little command pod here. Uh, I like to come over and make sure that all my Kerbinauts get home safely. So I put a parachute right there on that and that's it. So to get the command pod back, I usually take a decoupler and put it on right here. So that way, when I'm entering back into orbit, I can detach it, and then all I have is just the command pod that I'm trying to slow down. Um, and you have to be very careful of your uh, staging over here as well. Uh, now I'm also going to show you how to do asparagus staging, uh, which is really, really helpful. Uh, that's helped me out a tremendous amount throughout the game. So after you get this little part on, you want to you want inline advanced stabilizer or a, um, a ASAS uh, it helps the stability of your rocket as you're um, <laughs> firing hundreds of meters per second up into uh, space so we get our uh, SAS on then we come back to propulsion and we want to put uh, a little bit of RCS fuel on there and then come back over to our utilities and make sure that we've got power. Okay, now with that, that's, uh, let's see, okay, yeah, that's the basic um, command module design that I use. Uh, this is basic design on everything. You know, you know, you can switch the command pods out different sizes um, or different ones or whichever that they have over here you want to use, but this is what I use for my man missions. So, with that said, we'll come over here and we'll add just a little tiny fuel tank with uh, this little poodle engine here. Now that's just going <clears> to <throat> be for when we get up into orbit. We're already in orbit and we can get down um, and we'll use that. So we'll come back over to the structure, get another decoupler. Now we start with the real uh, nitty gritty stuff. Come over here. This is the largest tank for this size. So, what we'll do is we'll get. Uh, actually, we'll just use. We'll use that. So, come down over here. Now, I'm going to hit the, hit the Alt key and hold it to um, copy something. So if I click on that, it will copy everything below it, which is what I want. Now in order to do the asparagus staging, uh, let's see, I don't want that. I want this one. We want to put it somewhere about the middle. Okay, you hit your X key to um, change the amount or how many you want put on there. Uh, I like to keep it uh, at an angle snap makes it easier to put things on um, correctly, I guess. 
Alright, so now we've got those two. Now, <clears throat> let's check our staging real, real quick here. Now in this, okay, so we want these two to go at the same time. So that'll cut down on our staging. And then that goes in the parachute, okay. So these will go first, and these will go second. What I mean by that, you'll see what I mean here in a second. The asparagus staging, it uh, really helps cut down the mass um, as you're going up into orbit so that you can go faster. So if you cut down your mass, because once you're out of fuel on certain tanks, you don't want to you want to keep hauling the the mass of all those fuel tanks up. You want to get rid of them, and that's what this asparagus staging will do. <clears throat> so now I've got those all those on there. Now what you want to do is you come back over to propulsion, and we go down and we get your uh, your little fuel duct. Now we want to double check and see which ones are going to go first, which I believe these are going to go first. Okay, so we'll come down over here. And we want to run this fuel line into this guy. And then we have it on, on two, so that both of these that come off will fall away when their fuel's out. And basically these two here will feed in to these two, and then I'm going to have these two, zoom in here, feed in to the main guy. So after all the four of these these little shells fall off, I'm still gonna have a full fuel tank right here to keep propelling my my rocket up. Very helpful, very helpful stuff. All right, come over here and get the max. There's this one here. Put that on again. I'm just hitting the Alt key um, to copy it, so I don't have to come back over to, to this uh, interface over here every time I want something. Now, that is pretty much it. Oh, dang it. Okay, these fall off first. So these want to come down here, right? Okay, yep. Boom, boom, okay. Now, after you get all that on, you gotta have your space tape. You know, you can never have too much space tape. Again, just keep your symmetry on there, um, and we'll just come over and we'll put one strut on each bottom, and then we'll also put one on each top, like so. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I also like to stabilize the top by coming here and doing this. Basically it just kinda holds your rocket together. It's space tape. <laughs> Alright. So now we want a little extra added boost. So I'm gonna come over here and get some radial decouplers. And this baby is gonna fly into orbit. And again hit the alt key just to, to copy it. All right, make sure all those are on good and centered. Okay, now these we're gonna want to fall off after all the engines, because what we're gonna put on here is a solid rocket booster. And we probably don't need to have the big ones here, um, considering that this is really, really lightweight. Probably actually don't even need. Yeah, we're gonna go with the smaller rockets here. Because I think this will this will probably get us into orbit just fine. So we'll put those on, copy that, come around to the other side here, and put on there. Good to go. Again, don't forget your space tape. Gotta have your space tape. Okay. So now, that is our initial rocket design. Now we're going to slap some aerodynamic. I like to use the ABR winglets uh, because they, they're movable parts. Um, and they're actually very, very helpful if the wings can move while you're flying up. Because uh, when you put your SAS on, it, 
the computer wants to automatically uh, compensate and adjust for you, and uh, those those wings really <clears throat> really help. But these are going to fall off relatively quick. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put some wings on these guys. Gotta have stability even after these guys are gone. Okay. Now, you may have to adjust them just a little bit um, to get them fairly straight. That's why I like to have this uh, angle snap on because it'll automatically place it kind of where it needs to be. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Um, from here, we're going to go into your structural again, and we're going to get our launch stability enhancers. I have played the career mode a little bit, and uh, I'll tell you what, man, without these launch stability enhancers, <laughs> you really have to build your rocket um, to actually stand on its own, uh, which is kind of a pain. But, hey, that's the name of the game, right? Alright, so... Now that we have our basic rocket and everything set up on there, we've got power, we've got RCS fuel. The only thing we didn't do that I think about is add our RCS thrusters. And usually what you want to do before um, you do all that. So this is the guy right here I'm going to have in space. So I'll come over here and hit my center of mass. And then I want to have four of these guys. Um, we'll say right there in the middle, and that should help us maneuver that around really well. Um, I've also seen people move them, you know, a little bit, like down here, which I like to do. Put a, a little bit on, on each side. Oops, a little bit on each side of the uh, mass of the ship there, and then you can just come back down here, hook that back up, and then we'll add four more down here. Yeah. Oop, nope, that was only two. There we go. Alright. So now we've got our command, we've got our SAS, uh, we've got our RCS fuel and RCS. The only other thing that we could put on here uh, is some lights just to be able to see our glorious rocket as it's in orbit on the dark side of the planet. Let's zoom in here. Now another trick, uh, if you hit the A, D key, A and D keys, uh, as well as the Q, it will it will rotate. So, and the other thing is if you hold your shift, and you can use your W, S keys as well, hold your shift key and it does it in increments. Now if I take the shift key off, it just flips it. So if you want to you want to modify it a little bit and have it go a little bit more straight or at an angle or whatever, you can do that just by holding the shift key. And that's really helpful too when you get into um, your, uh, where are they at, these little cephatrons um, because you can actually put these on the sides of your, if you have a really long fuel tank, you can put these on the sides of it and you can actually hold the shift key and angle it down and away from your ship instead of just, you know, straight out. So, that tends to help a lot, too. So, now, with all that said, um, I believe we're ready to go. Let's just check our stages real quick. We've got our uh, stability enhanced launchers. We've got our thrusters, two, four, five thrusters. We've got our four rockets. The rockets will fall off first, of course. And we want to check this. This is the most important part of the asparagus. You want to check these here. Okay, yes, these come off first because they feed into here, and then these feed into the, the main one. And then these guys here fall off, and then we have all of our other stages there. Okay, so we're good to go. We're going to name this, oh, let's, let's name it uh, Viking, Viking 1. How about that? That's a, that's a good name. All right. Now, let's go launch. On the launch.
launch pad, physics kicked in as per that green light, and everything looks stable. I'm gonna switch over to my map view and bring up my HUD. Okay, let's uh, turn the SAS on, throttle this puppy all the way up, and we're off. You know, this is my first video, usually when I get up to about 100 meters per second, or a thousand meters, depending upon <clears throat> whatever it is. I will take the SAS off, get over to about that marker right there, the 10 degree marker is what I like to call it. And in reality, all that does is, is it just gets me away from the launch pad, and it gets me out more towards the sea, um, so that when I start dropping my stages, it doesn't fall back on my other carbonates down there. As you can see, those rockets came off really early. We're not even out of the atmosphere yet, but we're still cruising. Still cruising. Now at about 12,000 meters up, again, I'll take it over to about the 55 degree marker. I'm going to turn our um, RCS on. Makes it a lot easier to move around. go and at this point we can turn our lights on look at our marvelous ship as it heads up into orbit yay and our orbit is only at 35 almost 40,000 meters in climbing and we've still got plenty of fuel I always love this part or hate it, but depending upon the spaceship, you could build one that doesn't really want to fly very well. And then you could hate this part, because you do it so many times. Like, geez, just get the thing up there. And there goes that stage. Cruise back over here, shut down that rocket, and now we're just cruising. Then we come up here, we got our 113 meters up. I'm sorry, 113,000 meters up. We'll just set a waypoint. Get us out there. Like so. Line our ship up with the waypoint. And we will fast forward through this. We're going to attempt to fast forward through this. Alright. Now we're going to start burning. Establish an orbit. We'll go around once or twice and then bring it back down. So, I mean, that's your asparagus staging. And as you can see, we've still got plenty of fuel to burn up here. And we, didn't, we haven't even hit this other stage that we have up here. This is like a reserve fuel tank in case of emergencies. You know, in case you didn't make it all the way up or something happens or, you know, you know things happen. It's, uh, it's space, people. Things happen. Especially when you're playing Kerbal. So, yeah. Barely even touched our mono propeller, or RCS fuel. And I'm, I'm surprised this, this has got quite a bit of fuel left. It'll probably take us all the way... Might have a little bit fuel left in that fuel tank, I think. But it will definitely get it. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Boom. Look at that. Almost a... No, pretty circular orbit. Not, not perfect, but... And there you have it. That's our orbit. And I, re I really recommend about this this uh, distance of an orbit for space stations. I know I've said that before, but ah, it just makes it so much easier. So much easier. Okay, now at this point we're gonna we're gonna just gonna burn. We're on a retrograde marker already, so I can just burn it, and we'll bring our orbit back down. Yeah, we still got plenty. 
I could probably set I could probably land this thing back right down on land if I had some landing struts. gonna hit back in the ocean. I'd like to like land over land though, really. And this video's probably going on quite <clears throat> quite a bit longer than I'd like it to. I'll try to keep these about ten minutes or so. Getting close, getting close. Again though I can't can't leave a video undone without bringing my Kerbinot back to space. Or back to space back to Kerbal. Leave them up in space and everybody will be crying. Crying havoc at me. So as you can see, the, th that design that uh, that I just showed you works really, really well. And then you've got a, you've got this really tiny engine. It's not very well for atmos in the atmosphere, but if you're out in space, away from uh, you know big bodies of gravity, uh, you could have that left over for uh, maneuvering back towards a bigger body of gravity so that you can get in uh, to the atmosphere, you know, whatever you need to do, really. Uh, it's always nice to have extra fuel. <laughs> always very nice to have extra fuel. So at this point, I think I am almost... thing on land. We're gonna do it. Maybe. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Come on. You're just right there. Yes! And we got it right over land. Amazing. Oh. Nope, it's going to land in the water, isn't it? After all that. Well, I just... I don't accept that. I will force myself over land. Nope, out of fuel. <laughs> okay, I guess I won't force myself over land. Pretty dang close, though. And we don't need that anymore, so we'll get rid of that. And we can take take all that off. RCS and the SAS. And it looks like we have successfully re-entered Kerbin Atmosphere. And then if the chute deploys, we will have successfully returned a Kerbinot back to Kerbin. And there it goes, folks. Well, that's all for this tutorial. Uh, I hope that's helped. Obviously, you didn't have to watch till the end, but if you did, I appreciate it. Um, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Uh, it's always appreciated, and I will keep the tutorials coming. Thanks, guys. See you next time.